Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back again. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway, welcoming you into yet another episode of the show, Thursday, February 4th. On the very precipice of Super Bowl, Tom Brady, Patrick. Mahomes is Sammy gonna good friend be of the there. show, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, great friend of the show. Yeah. yeah, I'm confident Sammy Watkins will be there. I am not confident okay. in Mr. Hagar. Not the halftime show. Who is the ha- is the weekend? Is that what yeah, it is? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that one song. Oof. I, I don't. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. sing it because it will infect everyone in this room right now. Another truth episode coming your way. Super Bowl coming up. And uh, very excited about that because Super Bowl Sunday, yeah, there's a game Mm -hmm. between the two best teams, but also... And probably more importantly, the (laughs) pre-sale for the 2021 Ultimate Draft Kit is available. It's your best... That that horn that Mike just... (laughs) That horn Mike broke out was... It needs to be tuned up a little or something. Yeah, there is something in the horn. You got to clean the horn out from time to time. You want to give it another go? <laughs> Better. Oh, close. There it is. Oh. Wow, that was a good sound effect, Mike. Um, yeah, but the ultimate draft kit, if you look, you're going you're gonna to get it. You get it every year. It's great. Get it at the cheapest price, and that's Super Bowl Sunday. Plus, you'll get entered to win. Uh, a, a package that includes a listener league spot. If you're going to get it, get it anyways. And of course. This year, if you haven't already heard, the the UDK Plus is what I am in unfathomably excited about. We are going to have so much in that. It will have a Dynasty Pass that launches on Super Bowl Sunday. So when you pre-order, you're not even just pre-ordering. You're just getting stuff. Yeah, I guess it's more like ordering. Yeah, but at a pre-order price. Yeah, if we... <laughs> I mean, he's it's a great point. Yeah, why do, we, di- why do we discount it we then? We should not be discounting this thing. You're why are we it. figuring it out this, this on the not air? A, it's not a pre-order. It's an order. Yeah. Oh. Well, anyways, it's awesome. You'll get a, uh, a draft You might get a discount now. Uh, in-season DFS stuff. It'll be great. So check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com this Super Bowl Sunday. And, and make sure you subscribe to our socials because we are going live to answer some of your questions, talk the Super Bowl, all of that jazz Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell. You'll get notified when we go live. Do I know exactly what time we're going live? I still do not. I do. Oh. I know I'll be part of it. I know, but I'm not sharing. Oh, okay. Man. Mike's going to let me know when I'm going live <laughs> with Jason and himself. And uh, that will be a lot of fun. We also have uh, a highlight video coming out from the 2020. Uh, season, some of the memories and moments from oh, the show. It was a real gas. Yeah, it was a, it was, it's a good video. And uh, Adam Gase, he has his role to play in in most of the things we Number do. Number two. Thank you, thank you. All right, anything else we need to talk about at the top? Because uh, I think it's time for some buy sell. It's time. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, I, I've got a special entry into this Buy or Sell. Oh. oh. Uh, this is going to be a Super Bowl 55 edition. 55! But at the top, this question is just for Jason. Buy or Sell, Mike getting a haircut in the next three months. <laughs> okay. All yeah, right. all right. Gonna, so if I've got to walk through this here, I think he wants to maybe shave his head. Um, I don't oh know. Oh boy, if he'll he get took the, the hat off for YouTube. I'm permission sorry. Permission to do so. I'm we just got say, demonetized. I'm going to say he does. Yeah, right. Look at with this smolder. <laughs> I'm going to say he does get a haircut in the next three months. I will buy. 
Your hair looks like uh, Corey's friend from Boy Meets World. Oh, yeah. Totally. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, what was uh, his what? name? Ra- Topanga. No, not no, Topanga. No, not Topanga. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I don't remember his name. The, the name Ryder is sticking out to me. And I, think that, I think that Sean. might be the actor. <laughs> okay. I think the actor. Somehow I know his name. Nice Boy Meets World reference for your hair. So uh, it's, Well, my hair really looks like every every adolescent boy from the 90s it wasn't it's not just sean but the uh yeah the, e- eric was that the brother jtt yeah all of the three boys on uh yes. home improvement as well Every because we all had this hair yeah yeah now you, i will put it away <laughs> you look special all right buy or sell tom brady 275 passing yards in the super bowl what do you think i will buy this um tom brady okay. has been throwing it as well especially later into the season um, as he has ever, and while I don't expect him to put up 400 plus yards, this is going to be a game where the offenses will win the game. I mean, the, I, I complete. He's going to throw for 400 yards. He, he, I, he I'm going to buy well it. He, he threw for 345 yards against Kansas City uh, earlier this season in a loss, and so I 245. That that's not the game that we're going to get this weekend. We're going to get a, a more of a barn burner. Bruce Arians is not losing in the Super Bowl. Uh, with Leonard Fournette. He's going to lose it with the GOAT throwing the football. So oh, through the playoffs, now that first game against Washington, Brady did ignite for 381 yards. But after that, 199 against the Saints, 280 against the Green Bay Packers. So I mean, he did hit the over. Are you buying? Uh, are you both bought? Yes. yes. I feel like I've pushed into, the, into a corner. I'm like, baby. No one puts baby in a corner over Well, here. you have a choice to make. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell it. Eat that, Tom Brady. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got him. Buy or sell Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl MVP. Buy. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a buy from buy. this guy. I, Kansas City will win, and it will be Patrick Mahomes. If Kansas City wins, it's impossible for it not to be Patrick Mahomes. We saw that last it, year. Yeah, it, it, was, it is impossible because last year Mahomes was not the Super Bowl MVP. Damian Williams was. Was the MVP, and they still didn't give it. All right, so so let me just scenario. Let's say Patrick Mahomes goes three hundred and three, mm-hmm. uh, and Tyran Matthew has two pick sixes in the Super Bowl. Then Pat Mahomes will be your Super Bowl MVP. Correct. Okay. And Correct. if all of those yards and touchdowns, all of them, every single yard and touchdown goes to Kelsey or Hill, Pat Mahomes will be your MVP. Yes. Okay. All right. The the NFL is the odds are with you. The NFL is building something here. Uh, a dynasty, yeah. Can Andy Reid win the MVP? <laughs> no, the dynasty is the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's going to be the start of a new ten year career for Tom Brady. Yeah, he says he wants to play past forty five. I, 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 he could probably do it. <laughs> are we going to get to do this show longer than Brady plays in the National Football League? That's in terms of our ages. You I know will, what I'm saying? Like, are sell. we going to have the level of of execution that Brady has at 45 when we get there? I don't I have don't the level of execution right now. So, What's the status of uh, Neuralink? Oh, we could get that. Elon? Elon, yeah. help us out. Uh, we'll have to start eating plants, and that's just not something that oh, I'm God. willing to do. I've had one. No. All right, Leonard Fournette, will he score more fantasy points than Clyde Edwards Alaire? Buy feel, or sell? I feel personally attacked by this question. This is a this is actually, I think, the most difficult question of the three. When I was looking at this before the show, it really grossed me out. Because yes, it, I it should. Wa- I want to say absolutely not Clyde Edwards Alaire will outscore him, but uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire's still been dealing with injury. Leonard Fournette has been valuable, happens to get touchdowns on a regular basis. And I don't want to answer Leonard Fournette. So I will go with the heart, and I'm going to say Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I'll buy Fournette above Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Yeah. Never. (laughs) I will never take Leonard Fournette above my beloved Clyde Edwards-Alaire. All right. I don't feel great standing alone with Leonard. That's for (laughs) sure. That was Buy or Sell brought to you by our good friends at Pristine Auction. A very special Super Bowl auction starts today. It is dedicated to the NFL. There are all kinds of items. Bidding starts at $20. Nice. No reserves all week long. Check it out at pristineauction.com. And don't forget to use the code BALLERS if you want $10 off. If you don't want $10 off, 
and you're Mr. Moneybags like Brooks, mm -hmm. then don't use the code BALLERS. And Brooks you know, has his own code. If you sign up with the code Brooks, it adds on, $10. It adds $10. That's $10. Right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I've never heard of a coupon code <laughs> it's that a reverse, adds the price reverse to Reverse coupon code. Yeah, he wants the product to feel more valuable. He's like, yeah. this is way too cheap for me on Pristine <laughs> Auction. Their prices are too good. This can't be real. I'm going to add to I it. I do wonder. You know, we've talked about this before. Sometimes, when, especially like on Amazon or when you're browsing online, and you're buying something that is a commodity or something that like a lot of people make. Like I need, uh, I don't know, a hinge for my gate. Mm -hmm. And there's tons of options. You inherently look at the prices and say, if that costs more, it is better. Right. Right? The $7 hinge is clearly a better product than the $2 hinge. Right, Which because uh, that's all you have to go by. So I'm just wondering if like, if we let people increase the price of the UDK, does that make it <laughs> oh, like a, a button to increase? I was going to throw in, uh, recently I have discovered that is not true with light bulbs. Oh, more mm. expensive does not mean better. No, or, or it no, it does. Oh, okay. You do do not skimp on the light bulb price. What you got like a cheap light bulb? I, I look. I've I buy my Amazon or my my light bulbs just like everybody else off of Amazon, and they're delivered to my house. I of course went budget shopping. You know, it's a light bulb. Yeah, what uh, it's on or off. Yeah, exactly. And then it's off too soon. And then these I'm buying like I, I got LED light bulbs that 20 are twenty years. Oh, yeah, more like 10 months. Really? Yeah. These things, are, they're crumbling. They're falling apart. <laughs> Pay up for light bulbs, people. <laughs> well, Brooks does. We know that. All right. Back into the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. All right, back into the truth of the wide receiver position from 2020. We just had the part one episode. If you missed it, we went over the first eight uh, highest finishing wide receivers in fantasy. We left you with a cliffhanger. Mm. Um, Jason did think about not coming in today. Yeah, as I do every day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this one was especially difficult for me because it was one of my my guys, Tyler Lockett. Your my guy finished as a top 10 wide receiver, It's Jason. incredible, Mike. I have never felt worse about a top 10 wide receiver pick in my life. Now, he was drafted, if you remember, at like wide receiver 18 or 20s. It was maybe even later than that. It certainly wasn't this high, and he very much outproduced that. He finished with a hundo. For 1,054 yards and 10 touchdowns. That's that's a really... 100 receptions. That's a good line. This is perfection. My call was great. I nailed it. <laughs> but this episode is called The Truth of Wide Receivers. And Tyler Lockett hurt you as often as he helped you. More now, often. Well, I wouldn't say that. Statistically wise. He definitely <laughs> hurt you... Um, fifty percent of the time were his bust games. He he absolutely busted, just flat out crushed your team fifty percent of the and time. And he was good thirty eight percent of the time. And it wasn't just that though, because it was if you look at the string of games, it wasn't every other. It was <clears throat> he he would lull you into a false sense of confidence. Of he started out nuclear hot, had the couple bad games before the bye week. You're like, oh, you know. Everyone has bad games. We, we talk about that. Wide receivers are inconsistent. Right after the bye week, the number one wide receiver on the week against Arizona, I believe that was the 200-yard the mm -hmm. game. And then he's terrible for another stretch, but then he plays Arizona again, and he's good. And then you just kept punching yourself in the face repeatedly as you played Tyler Lockett over and over and over through the rest of your fantasy season, and he did not help you one time between weeks 12 and championship week. I, I, we're varying the lead, which is the consistency rank that we evaluate with. Yes. He was the number nine overall fantasy wide receiver. No one doubting the skill, ability, talent. No, he's great. And upside of Tyler Lockett on a weekly basis. His consistency rank on the season at the wide receiver position was 44. That has to be a record. That gap has to be a record, yeah. Uh, eight bus games, three good games, three great games on the season, two of them against Arizona, as you mentioned. And uh, look, the end of the year, it was so difficult. It was tougher on DK Metcalf, on Russell Wilson, on the passing offense. 
And so this was just bewildering because through the first three weeks, you looked like you had a, a rock solid. Like you, you played Tyler Lockett the rest of the year. That's yes. the truth. Yes, you, you played did. him the rest of the year, which is what makes the truth about Tyler Lockett so difficult. He was drafted as the wide receiver 22. He finished at nine. Now, that's a value. Mm -hmm. But it was tough. Here's where Tyler Lockett helped you. If you traded him halfway through the season, you <laughs> were awesome because you drafted him and he was great the first half of the year. The first uh -huh. half of the year, first eight weeks, he was the wide receiver four. This really was a tale of two seasons for Russell Wilson. We've talked about that. We talked about it with DK Metcalf. But on a per-game basis, he was the wide receiver 44 in the second half of the season. So he was someone that did not help you at all the second half of the season outside of, you know, a good game here or there. He crushed you more often than not. So if you if you ended up having, having, uh, happening to get a trade offer for Tyler Lockett halfway through the year and decide to move on, capitalize on that value, then phenomenal. Outside of that, <clears throat> highest, it was the most disappointing top 10 wide receiver performance of all time. Yeah, and he, he had the highest bust rate ever for a top 10 wide receiver since the Truth Series on this show was birthed, which uh, is the past five years. And uh, the wide receiver 42, like Jason said, in points per game from the second half of the season. Yeah, list of players who would have helped your fantasy team more than Lockett in that span. Darnell Mooney, Tim Patrick, Jacoby Myers, Zach Pascal, Chad Hansen. And now, good news, the Seahawks want to get back to running the ball more. They, uh, that's their big offseason plan, and so yikes. All right, we'll end with yikes. The truth about... That's our assessment for 2021? Yeah, is, yikes. Is yikes for the wide receivers of the Seattle Seahawks. They're probably going to be overdrafted yeah when you finish at nine that's what happens number 10 mike evans finished at 10th consistency rank of 15th 31 percent bus 63 percent good games 13 percent great he was solid he's the he guy was, he was solid he is the guy and i think the you know we had justin jefferson we talked about him on the last episode and we kind of said, okay, you look over the course of the year and you get to throw out a little bit of the beginning of the year because he's a rookie establishing himself. Now, Mike Evans is not a rookie. But Tom Brady was a rookie in this offense sure. with Bruce Arians. And you saw a lot more consistency from Mike Evans over the second half. The first half, he was 25th in consistency. The second half, he was 13th. He really was a very rock-solid receiver for your team over that span. And I think Jason's point, should not be lost. He is the guy. He's who Brady preferred to throw the ball to. Godwin, Antonio Brown, Gronk came up second. Yeah, it, it, it took time to figure out who it was going to be, not just for fantasy analysts, but for the team themselves. You saw that through the beginning of the year. But from week eight on, he was the wide receiver eight. He's the clear one for the team going forward. You've got Chris Godwin as a free agent. Antonio Brown is a free agent. Mm -hmm. Mike Evans is in tow. So Mike Evans, uh, you know, look, all he's done is be a phenomenal fantasy wide receiver every single year of his career. And he hit the 1,000. We, we just oh. made it. We, I mean, he got hurt. 1,006 in yards, 13 touchdowns, career high. Oh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all about Mike Evans going into next season. I think it's clear that he established this is my team, Chris Godwin, and uh, you you can I think you could be a part of it. I think he'll probably be a little little overdrafted. Like this is not the kind this is not the style of wide receiver that I necessarily lean into for fantasy. Where last year sixty seven receptions, this year seventy receptions, uh, thirteen touchdowns, career high. You know, if you end up seventy and a thousand and eight, which he had the previous two years, you're not finishing inside the top ten. That's for sure. Yeah, but you had you had sixteen end zone targets for Mike Evans, which I that that number is probably going to continue moving forward. So you're saying, if Godwin does leave the Tampa Bay Buccaneers next year, you you feel like you would be out on Evans? Not out on Evans in totality, but compared to his draft price, most likely. All right, but it just depends on what other options they have. I doubt Bruce Arians is going to let you know. Multiple guys walk, and, and Evans will be all alone. When we saw volume from Evans, he was all alone in the offense when Jameis Winston was throwing the ball a ton. But I don't know. I It reminds me of Vincent Jackson, you know, with, with 67, 70 reception totals. Sure. Um, 
he's one of the players where double digit touchdowns is very, you know, you can expect him to be in that range for yeah, sure. Him and Adams, but thirteen is a little bit high. That's all I'm saying. Sure, but the yardage will be there, and that's the nice thing with with Evans. He's got the longest active streak of thousand yard seasons. Has never not had a thousand that's yard fair. season. So I I I, I don't think tried, Mike Evans though. will be overdrafted. Um, you he once you've been in the league a long long time you get a little bit of fatigue over some of these players. And I feel like there has been some Mike Evans fatigue. Well, he was technically overdrafted this year. He was technically overdrafted this year. What was his ADP? Eight. Oh. Finished at 15th in consistency, 10th at the position. We said it before the year. We thought Evans and Godwin would both be overdrafted because they had to perfectly hit with Brady to – to return on their draft price. Yeah, I, I would not say you're overdrafted, though. If you're drafted at 8, you finish at 10. That, I mean, it's obviously, you me. can you could say that, well, he finished lower than where he was drafted, but that's not... You're, okay, are you happy? Were you happy with the season from Evans in totality with the consistency factored in? What's the truth about your satisfaction ranking on Evans at, at 8 overall? The truth about Mike Evans is that if, if you held Pat and you used him the whole season, I think you were thrilled with him by the end. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. He, he delivered when it mattered. Weeks 10... 11, 12, 15, and 16, huge weeks. All right, we'll move on to A.J. Brown. Before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsors, and we've got a new one for you. Manly Bands gentlemen, for the better part of their lives, or better halves, have been fantasizing about the perfect wedding ring. Uh, cut, clarity, carrot, color, you name it. For us, uh, not so much. Jewelry. Yeah, what's that stuff? Yeah, I I don't know. And uh, <laughs> I, I can actually remember, you know, I'm, I'm this is my 15th year being married, I think I thought about my band for five seconds, and it was like, yeah, that one works. I'll take is that one, that one not very expensive? <laughs> okay, I will get that one. Uh, Manly Bands is here to rescue you from an otherwise hellish band buying experience. I've got one on my finger right now. I made the swap from my original band to a Manly Band. I love it. It looks great. And uh, I've got to brag about the selection on yes. Manly Bands because it's actually... I'm like geeking out over it because you can choose, you can choose all the traditional kinds of bands. And I have like a black wedding band on and it's a, uh, it's a metal band. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. But they have here. Let me read the materials. Gold, wood, antler, okay. steel. Okay. Better, get, closer. Get, but, we, but I'm not even yeah, to the, yeah. get to it. Dinosaur bones. Dinosaur what? bones. People. And meteorites. <sighs> Fellas. You can you can have a dinosaur bone ring. I mean, you can have the dinosaur bone ring or the meteorite ring that killed the dinosaurs. Oh man! I mean, or both, or both. <laughs> and uh, they have a ton of really cool. They have whiskey barrel collections for the wood inside of the rings. So and check also it out. Dinosaur bones and also <laughs> dinosaur bones. It's incredible, and uh, we've got a special deal for you to order your manly band and get twenty percent off plus a free silicone ring, which is great for uh, if you're playing sports and stuff like that, go to manlybands.com slash footballers and enter the promo code footballers. That's manlybands.com slash footballers, code footballers, for 20% off. Manly Bands are the best rings, period. And we'd also like to thank IP Vanish. IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN it is a super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not running through a VPN, people out there are looking at your data. They are looking at what you are looking at. You know that feeling when someone's looking at your screen over your shoulder? Imagine that someone is just doing that. If you're not on a VPN, people are doing that, so you need to check out IP. And then Vanish. they're selling me stuff. And they are doing that. Look, it, you can get an anonymous IP address. That means your personal IP address can't be tracked anymore. You can circumvent any of that garbage online censorship. They have IP Vanish has more than 1,500 servers in 70 locations. If you are at the coffee shop and you're on public Wi-Fi, everyone has access to your information, and that's why you got to get on IP Vanish. It is a fantastic deal. It is a protection that you need, and they have plans starting at just three dollars and forty nine cents a month, or twenty seven ninety nine a year. You can go to ipvanish.com slash footballers to claim this 65% savings. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings. You get that, like I said, 65% off. It is the best of the best. It is rated a 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. Protect yourself. Show them some love. 
ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. All right. This next player, A.J. Brown, this is one of the gold mines of the truth episodes. Yes. Right here. Yes. Finishes at 11. That's where he's going to show up and probably about where he's going to be going into next year. A.J. Brown is not the 11th best wide receiver in fantasy football. Correct. A.J. Brown belongs where his consistency rank is, which was sixth overall. He was dominant, and yet the part of the year where you make your first impression coming mm -hmm. off of a great rookie season, it was huge letdown. Bad game, injured, injured, bye week. I, and you forgot about him. I had him as one of our keepers coming into the season. It was awful. I felt like that whole first month, I did not get the player, and it really does sour your opinion on him, and it will reflect the next year's draft price. But from week five on, once he was back, he was the wide receiver three in fantasy football. He is elite. You saw that in his rookie season. He backed it up this coming year. Cordy Davis is a free agent. He, mm -hmm. They could re-sign him. I'm sure they'll bring in other wide receivers. But the alpha is there. I think that's what... The A, A and A. AJ Green st <laughs> stands AJ for Brown. AJ Brown. It's Alpha J Brown, <laughs> and uh, he he's he's just amazing. <laughs> he tweeted uh, when they used to party. I went to work out. He's okay. a hard worker, and uh, if you uh, are unaware, so he had surgery cleanup procedure on yes. both knees. He was told that he probably would miss the season after the injury early in the season. He chose to play through it. Uh, and he did it pretty well. Yeah, so he did that last year. Very hurt. It was an absolutely sensational year for A.J. Brown. So I'm with you guys that he will be a player you need to look for the value of. Uh, if he's going around 11 or so, that's going to be an absolute smash draft selection. Currently, this he has the second highest yards per target for the first two years of a career behind only Mike Wallace. AJ Brown is absolutely incredible and he AJ Brown like this is you you had the proof of concept 2 years ago and now you have a, a, essentially a full season. He can coexist with Derrick Henry and they can all get theirs in that Tennessee Titans offense. Now, do you let me let me throw this out. Do you guys uh, guys have any concerns for AJ Brown and Ryan Tannehill with them losing their offensive coordinator. I really Arthur. don't. I really don't. Um, I I think one of the things that happens here with A.J. Brown and maybe the reason why he'll be underdrafted beyond the beginning of the year is his quarterback. You say, well, Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. and Tyreek Hill, that combination, it's dynamic, it's incredible. And Ryan Tannehill still has a, a, a number two stink on him. I'm telling you, my mind was blown. John, John Paulson tweeted out a comparison of the last 26 Regular season starts between Patrick Mahomes and Ryan Tannehill. Now, Tannehill has a better completion percentage. Mahomes kills him in yards. It's it's almost uh, it's over. It's a little embarrassing. It's over a thousand more yards in that span. But outside of that, Tannehill has one more touchdown. That's unbelievable. He has one more touchdown pass. <laughs> 55 to 54. So on a per game basis, he's throwing more touchdowns than Patrick Mahomes. Better completion percentage. Same amount of interceptions. Uh, he's rushing the ball. It's it's incredible. His mm -hmm. points per game at the position is 25.9 to Mahomes' 26.2. Don't look at Derrick Henry's Titans and, and, and forget about what A.J. Brown can do. I think that's jumping off the page to me on this episode. Agreed. All right. Eighth best target share, by the way. I mean, he's, he's an alpha, like it's you said. He's probably only going up next year. Yeah. I mean, when you look at what you'll pay for Tyree Kill and what you'll pay for A.J. Brown, it's just Brown is the value. I can't wait for the third year breakout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, man, and that could happen if he just stays healthy because those those final year numbers. I mean, he finished with eleven touchdowns, over a thousand yards. He basically finished with the the Mike Evans line, but he missed uh, essentially three games. All right, Allen Robinson at number twelve, consistency rank of sixteen. He is a free agent, and ho hum, he's got mitts. I mean, just a great wide receiver. 100 receptions, 1,200 yards, six touchdowns. That's what hurts him, the touchdown totals. Otherwise, you're you're a top eight, top seven guy. 
But uh, what was your impression? What's the truth about Robinson? 25% bust, 44% good, 19% great. The, the truth is, is he was an okay fantasy option for you. He was nothing outlandishly special or bad. And on the field, we all know what the truth is. He was He's phenomenal. He's one mm. of the best wide receivers in the game, and he had really bad quarterback play. Um, whether it was Foles or Trubisky, it was difficult to watch. You go put on the 151 targets, on, uh, and, and you put yourself through that. And then think about how Allen Robinson feels having to dive for every single ball. And he, he'll get him. And so the question is going to become, um, who's his quarterback? And what's the situation? Because you can't ask for more than 151 targets. He'll probably not go up from there. He will probably go down. He might be 135 target player next year. We don't know what team, what quarterback. But let me ask you this. Would you rather have 135 targets from a good quarterback? or 155 targets from, from a Nick Foles. Foles slash Trubisky level quarterback. Like, what would you prefer for fantasy? For I fantasy? will take the good quarterback. Yeah, because I want the touchdown opportunities. I want the sustained drives. I want to know that you're going to get down the field. Now, even if he goes back to Chicago, he'll have a different quarterback. Mitch Trubisky's not going to be the quarterback for the Bears next year. Right. And if I'm Allen Robinson and I've lived the life of Blake Bortles and Mitch Trubisky and their backups – that's my number one priority in the offseason. Give me a chance to – look, he might make a lot of diving catches, but he don't want to. Mm -mm. He'd like to make some routine catches every once in a he while. He wants to catch in, in, stride, in, stride. in stride passes for the Miami Dolphins from Deshaun Watson. That's but what he wants. He – after if once he goes and he gets a good quarterback, well, you know, fingers crossed, he, we may see a highlight of Allen Robinson – First game of the year, catching a ball in stride and housing it, and they'll zoom, and he'll just be weeping. Yeah, he tears of joy will stream down his face if he could play with a good quarterback. It will really move me. <laughs> I will be moved absolutely. And the good news for Allen Robinson is, no matter where he goes, we don't have to be concerned about the quarterback, right? Because he has played with That's true with the worst of the worst, and he has produced. May, not even 28 years old until right before the season. Third contract. You have, and he was a top 12 wide receiver. If he can just get some good quarterback play, maybe he moves into the top five. If he, if, if he has bad quarterback play, he's a top 15 guy. 13 is Robert Woods. Consistency rank of 22. He will also have a new quarterback. 129 targets, 90 for 936 and 6. Um, that is what Robert Woods does. Uh, very few elite games, 13% great games, 38% bust, a little higher than you'd hope to see from him. It's his highest bust rate in four years. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. 56% good games and uh, ended up, for whatever reason, much better on the road this year, 15 fantasy points compared to nine at home. Don't know why that necessarily is. Had a couple of touchdowns on the ground that helped his fantasy finish. Look, I, I think Robert Woods felt more like his consistency rank for your team than he did his fantasy finish. Yeah, I agree. Which with was that. 22. So, yeah. better quarterback now. Right. Better quarterback. And, and you've got to, the, the problem is, okay, you've got a better quarterback, but is he going to be the first read for that quarterback? Because I'm confident sure. in. Robert Woods as the first read for the Sean McVay, Jared Goff-led team. Is Robert Woods the best wide receiver on the team? Um, I would say... Maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> it's, it is really tough with him they, and Cooper Cup. They're they both don't have really, the money to add somebody, do they? No. That wide no, receiver? No, they've no. been uh, okay. struggling they're, with the I finances. Can't, they're paid out. They're, they've just re-upped Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. Yeah, I mean, I think Woods... It's Woods, Cup, and Jefferson and Higby. So, so the the general consensus on fantasy Twitter when the trade happened for Stafford was that uh, the the draft value of both Woods and Cup was going to go up, and I think that's a mistake. I think that there we we kind of covered this when we talked about the trade. I think it's going to be similar production, which has been good, which has already been good. But that's I, I'm going to draft them. Um, as they have been 
drafted in years past. Uh, Woods has outperformed his ADP each of the last four years. So even this year, he was the 17th wide receiver off the board, finished at 13, probably felt right around that 17 range. You got what you what you wanted. He's not somebody that I think has some, you know, there's no invisible ceiling that he hasn't reached yet, right? I mean, we know what Robert Woods is. He's not going to be a huge yardage guy. He will be a PPR guy. You hope he scores enough to make you excited. He'd, he'd be a great wide receiver, you know, two on a, a running back heavy team. He'd be a great wide receiver three if you could find a way to do that. But there you go. Um, Woods' average depth of target this year was 7.1. Cup was 6.6. .6. That's where Stafford is so different than Jared Goff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Goff, I think, was like 30th in deep passing and in staffers near the ceiling. Uh, the, is that the right? The roof, the, the ceiling, top. the top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It works. Okay. <laughs> Shall we move on? Please. Keenan Allen. Oh, yeah. Finished at 14. He it's, was the tale of three seasons. Ah. That's, th that's a famous book. The the Tale of Three Seasons, a famous book. You had Consistency of Seven. Let me get that in there. Sure. Consistency of seven. He was very good. You had the beginning of the year where it looked like, oh no. You know, you're oh, gonna no. have oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. Um <laughs> you you know, you had the wrong quarterback there who wasn't gonna get the ball passed around. All the right. preseason talk about what Tyrod Taylor was gonna do to this offense was right. But then we got out of that quick. And then you had a, a great period of time where Keenan Allen was unfathomably great for uh, fantasy, locked and loaded. The targets were outlandish, but that was also when you were missing Austin Eckler for that great stretch. So then at the end of the year, you had the Justin Herbert plus Austin Eckler, that Keenan Allen, which was very good, but not great. Do what you, week did Eckler come back? Uh, let me look that up for you. Because I'm looking at the season, and uh, I agree. You know, he he. You can break things up into chunks for Keenan Allen, but to me, the truth. Week twelve. So to me, the truth about Keenan Allen is weeks two through fourteen. Like week one with Tyrod Taylor, get that out of my face. Uh, week fifteen, where you had the <laughs> wink, don't, wink, don't sit me game that we all got to experience. Uh, where the team should have sat him, I'm throwing that one out as well. That's fair. So weeks two through 14, he was the wide receiver five in points per game. This was a huge season for Keenan Allen. His ADP yeah. was wide receiver 23 because of fears because, of the quarterback Because position. of Tyrod Taylor. Yes. Yeah, exactly. But his talent and Justin Herbert got things done, but he is a high floor wide receiver when he's active and he's out there. At least seven receptions or a touchdown in 11 of 14 games. The question I have for you is, is he a top 10 wide receiver next year to you? Based on, look, the, he had to carry a, a big load this year. He had a 26% target share, fifth highest in football. Mike Williams was on and off the field. Uh, Eckler wasn't there. There was a lot going on on this team that he had to absorb a lot. Now, he can do that. If they want him to do that, he can mm -hmm. always do that. But does he belong in the top 10? Because he, he finished at 7th in consistency, but 14th at the position with the injuries. What do you think? He does to me. He, uh, he is an elite talent. Top 8? Uh, I don't know if I'll go there. Just I don't, eight, I don't have eight all those. 8 to 10? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just like I, I do believe. I, I, I can say I believe uh, with full confidence that he is a top 10 wide receiver. So, Jay, those games. So, when, when Austin Eckler came back, Wide receiver eighteen, then the, he had he did have a down game against New England the following week, and then wide receiver sixteen uh, against Atlanta in week fourteen. Yes, and 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 that's great. He was a solid wide receiver when Austin Eckler was was back. He was he was someone you wanted on your fantasy team. But I think that the point that I was making is more that you look at those weeks two through twelve before Eckler got back. And at that point, he was on pace for 180 targets. I mean, that was outlandishly high, far more than he was receiving once Eckler came uh, back. So, uh, I, you know, I expect him to be a 150-target guy, which is great. Now, we, we do have the variables of Anthony Lynn. 
uh, Anthony Lynn will no longer be the coach of the Los Angeles uh, Los Angeles Chargers. And you did have the news come out there at the end of the game that that Lynn was telling Herbert, you can't just keep throwing the ball at Keenan Allen, which – Bad advice. Like, uh, honestly, that's a fireball offense. <laughs> if, right. If, if, if it was. Going, if you're going to your quarterback saying, hey, stop throwing it to your number one, number one wide receiver who's always open and always does great things for your – for the team. Do you, do you think Herbert said back to him he said but but he always you know it's, football. But you know it's been working, right? And I'm breaking every <laughs> record that's ever been made for quarterbacks. I'm with and you have the, you have the variable uh Hunter Henry may not be back with the Chargers. He is a free agent. That's a, that's a whole target share that will be available. Yeah, and then you have the variable that this will, is a great defense on paper that lost most of its great players and they won't be in as many shootouts and now that's not to say that they can't put up a ton of points right the the defense for the Kansas City Chiefs got better and Pat Mahomes still can you know put up 35 without breaking a sweat so uh, Herbert will be better Keenan is absolutely locked in as a top 15 so, wide receiver to me I'll, we'll, we'll try and just do a quick name game here but because you're saying top 10 Andy Keenan Allen or or DK Metcalf Keenan yeah I'll take Keenan Keenan Allen or Allen, Allen Robinson? Keenan. Probably Keenan. Let's see. I those mean, are those are almost going to be identical to me. Yeah. So those and, two players. And so to me, that, that kind of puts him in that 8 to 10 range. This is the cliff. That was the that player right there, Keenan Allen, number 14 finish. That's where I believe the cliff of you know top-tier wide receivers is. Because at 15, by complete shock. What? By complete <laughs> awe. By no. five, by five games, five games inside the top twenty-four. This, five. This isn't out of sixteen. Jason brings it up all the time. This is a perfect example of it. All wide receivers are inconsistent, so yeah. anybody anybody can finish at fifteen. Anybody at all. But our our man here came through with a week seventeen number one overall performance that vaulted him to this spot. Uh, you're talking about Brandon Cooks? Yeah. Now, Brandon Cooks finished at 15. Now, the first thing that jumps off the page to me is like – Is that Brandon Cooks finished at 15? Well, that. But where where's Will Fuller? Did he not meet the the game's qualification? Uh, yeah. Because that, that seems insane to me. I will uh, I will look – Because he's definitely not in our list, and that seems like a player that belonged in our list. Um, oh, Brooks says but he's I, in But here. he missed the last six games, so that that's going to affect that fantasy finish tremendously. Anyways, we get to talk about Brandon Cooks. Uh, so, 15th at the position, 21st in consistency, 40% of the time a good game, 27% bust, 20% great. Like I said, I see five games Will Fuller, wide inside receiver, the top 24. 28. Finished at 28? Yeah. What was this consistency since you throw That, out? I don't know. Brooks Do you have just, that, Jason? I can get it. I would love to know that because Fuller was the Fuller guy was until fantastic. he was goodbye. Yes. So, all right. Uh, okay, you get to talk about Brandon Cooks. He's not going to likely have – he may have a new team for all we know. Doesn't he get traded every offseason? Yeah, I mean, that is the, that, that is the, uh, the annual event is which brand new team will Brandon Cooks play for. Will Fuller, I don't think they trade him, though. Will Fuller's consistency rank was wide receiver five. Uh, that's, Those numbers seem juiced up, Jason. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Again, the the consistency is just when they're on the field. So obviously, the suspension hurt you in fantasy. You lost him at the end of the year. But the point is that while he was out there, he was he was really, really great, very consistent, especially compared to Fuller. the other wide receivers. Fuller was. Oh, okay. Yes, I thought we were back on Brandon Cooks. <laughs> Wait, did we watch the same guy? <laughs> well, the the truth is is. Will Fuller had a great season, but Brandon Cooks ended up yet again with a th <laughs> eleven hundred yards, six touchdowns, I mean, good for you, eighty-one man. receptions. Kind of just guaranteed to happen, no matter where he is. So he deserves a lot of credit. Always been very streaky. Weeks one through four, he was the wide receiver eighty-two. Weeks five through nine, he was the wide receiver eight. Weeks ten through fifteen, he was the wide receiver forty-four. We retired him. Yeah, that was weeks five through nine <laughs> when we retired him. He said, "No, I'm not." And then when we forgot about it, he went back to 44. But this is not going to be – Here's here's the deal. Now, I, I would like to say this because I think that it is – I think the right analysis here we, – we obviously don't know if Deshaun Watson will be back, mm -hmm. if Will Fuller could or would be back. But if this team were to stay as it is now, 
and bring in another rookie wide receiver or a mid-level free agent acquisition at wide receiver. I actually think Brandon Cooks would be phenomenal. We can make all the jokes we want. Obviously, he wasn't that great when Will Fuller was there. He only had three games without Will Fuller at the end of the season uh, because he missed the first game that Will Fuller was gone with a suspension and he scored nine points, 23 points and 34 points in fantasy. If he is the clear one, he's always been good. He well, always he, just gets the, the job he, done. Deshaun Watson. Watson. Deshaun the, Watson no, is the magic yes. formula. Absolutely. I'm saying if the t 100%, that's out the window if Deshaun Watson isn't back. Yeah. But I'm saying if Watson is there, which right now that's what the, the head coach is saying is that Watson, you know, they're committed to him. Yeah. He's going to be the quarterback. Um, I'm, I am with you. If Watson is still there, and Brandon Cooks is the guy, and Will Fuller does not come back, then yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'll, no question. I'll, I'll probably take that draft no, day value. No disagreements there. And he went, He was the wide receiver 35 this year in ADP and finished at 15 with a consistency of 21. I don't know if I could have known when to play him ever. No. Other than the last three games of the year, which I would have happily played him. And he, he was the number one fantasy. This is perfect for Brandon Cooks. The best fantasy wide receiver in all of fantasy during week 17 when no one no one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, just as a reminder, uh, remember he was injured last year with the Rams and, and had a poor fantasy finish. But here's his fantasy finishes. He's wide receiver 15, 13, 12, 9, and 14. He's just always a top 15 wide receiver. Because... But would you rather – let me give you a scenario. Uh, would you rather have had nobody or Brandon Cooks this, this year? <sighs> that is, that team? is tough. <laughs> That is tough, and I see your point, and it's a good one. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like Tyler Lockett. He finished okay. as a, the wide receiver nine, but didn't always help your fantasy team. But these are guys that can but that's the wide receiver win you position. a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and not every wide receiver out there can just flat out win. Look, I had Tyler Lockett on my team. I was putting up a ton of points. I loved it because he could go out there and beat any opponent for me. Amari Cooper comes in at 16 but had a consistency rank of nine and a very distorted season. Yeah. Still had 63% good games, 13% great, didn't see a lot of ceiling there, 25% bust. That's a pretty good number for somebody who finished at 16. Weeks one through six, he was the wide receiver seven. Seemed like he was going to survive Dak going down. Week seven on, he was the wide receiver 30 in points per game. But what's the truth? I mean, this was a – this is kind of a throwaway year for that offense. Yeah, it's uh, – Gauging the truth of the Dallas Cowboys is tough because we the same exact thing happened to Zeke. You look at Zeke's first five weeks, and he was on track to be a, a an, a an easy running back one, a player you were very happy that was on your team. Amari Cooper, yeah, he started the year wide receiver 24, 24, 30, and wide receiver two. Like in, in that time span, he was the wide receiver five in points per game. It, the – I like, – Guys, quarterback is is a really important position. I think we are coming to that's what the truth is. The is that truth what about we're the learning? NFL are we learning is that? that the quarterback play is really important. Right. The truth about wide yeah. receivers is who's their quarterback. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, look, Amari Cooper was the clear number one for this team. Even with Michael Gallup, even with CeeDee Lamb being great, he was the clear number one. Now, the number one for this team post Dak wasn't that valuable because the offense wasn't that good. Uh, now, next year, there will be tons of debate between, I think, C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper, whether you want to take who should be still the one in in Cooper, um, or if you're afraid of C.D. Lamb eating into that workload, which I would be, um, whether you want to take the value, I would imagine C.D. Lamb is drafted well behind Amari Cooper. And Lamb was at 20 this year. Yeah. Just to throw it out there. I mean, like that gap, they were both affected by the same quarterback problem. Lamb... Finished at 20. I, Does I, he belong ahead of Amari Cooper in drafts? Oh, no. please. So I would rather have not yet. CD Lamb than Amari Cooper, but I don't. I really, in a redraft? In a redraft. I really don't want to have to draft him ahead. So if we can do our part to stop that from happening. Well, we just did. Mike just endorsed Amari Cooper on this show. Oh, Look, Mike's Mike man just, crush. Mike just said. He loves he a, Amari he Cooper. My guy? Probably a 2021 my guy. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate you guys. That's a Amari. Uh, uh, All right. Well, that was fun. Amari Cooper, though, uh, volume was there. 92 receptions in a tough year, 1,100 yards, and upside for next season. Uh, Marvin Jones, a free agent, came in at 17 with a consistency rank of 44. 
but really turned it on at the end of the year. In fact, from week eight on, he was the wide receiver four. So, you know, Stafford, no Galladay. Marvin Jones can still ball. Yeah. yeah, he he's Jared he's, Goff. Uh, well, no, Marvin Jones is gone. Free agent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, what well, he could still re-sign with the Lions. Obviously, they're going to desperately need wide receivers there. Um, it, Marvin Jones is a legitimately good wide receiver too for an NFL team. Yes. And so it's just a matter of we can't really extrapolate anything from this season other than to say he's not washed. He looks good on the field. He could still catch downfield passes. We have to we have to see where he lands. Juju at eighteen. Consistency of 17. Now, ironically, the fantasy finishes of his counterparts, Claypool was 19, Deontay Johnson was 23. All three guys just right around that range of not as good as you hope, probably, but not as bad as they could have been. Yeah, there's upside and downside when you get 350,000 passes to you, but it's two yards from the line of scrimmage because that was the offense for the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now it looks like Big Ben is probably going to be back he's saying that you know he'll play for whatever money the Steelers need him to Juju's not back like that's you know Marvin Jones could be back but I will be blown away we've known for years that the the Steelers have as an organization operated in a way that showed that they were going to be moving on from Juju that's why they have Claypool that's why they have um uh Deontay Deontay Johnson and they have James Washington and they have options yeah they don't need to pay big money to Juju so he's going to be gone I, I genuinely think that's, that makes – well, Claypool had – he was 38th in consistency. I'm going to throw all the Pittsburgh Steelers together real quick. Yeah. And Deontay was 24th in consistency. But with Juju leaving, Deontay just jumps off the page as a yep. breakout season next year if he can hold on to the football. But he already had 88 receptions this year. You know Big Ben loves to throw him the ball. I think he's the most interesting – uh, he was drafted as wide receiver 38, supposed to break out this year. Kind of did, kind of didn't. Oh, I, Finished I at 23. They're both super interesting to me. I think both players, you know, it's like addition by subtraction for your fantasy roster. Mm -hmm. Get rid of Juju's short area targets. Refactor the backfield. Find a running back that's not James Conner. Maybe in the draft. We talked about it with the great wide receivers. When your pie is split between two options, it's great. So if Juju's gone and all the targets for the most part are going to Claypool and Deontay Johnson, they'll they'll both be valuable. Yeah. Uh, the the end of the season there for Claypool, it reminded me a lot of I can't it, it was two or two or three years ago of uh, Marvin Jones who we just talked about, where the the fifty fifty ball it just kept missing. You know, like he, he would get to the hands Something would happen. He would crash to the ground, and he wouldn't be able to hold on. The defender would barely get there. Like Claypool, they, they were still taking the shots to him. And, and, I mean, and Claypool is just an absolute freak of a, of a human being, Mapletron. So he is very, very interesting to me. I think he was just a, a fraction away from an e, a, a much larger breakout this the, year. The one question I'll throw out there, though, is – we saw it with Drew Brees and Peyton Manning and now Big Ben and the reason sure. they built the offense, maybe they were just missing because maybe Big Ben's just missing now downfield. Mm -hmm. So that would be the one thing that gives me a little bit of fear. Now, they were creative. They gave him into rounds and other things, and he's going to mature, and he's going to get more involved in short area targets because of his route tree developing. But Big Ben was also – there was the question, is Big Ben going to be ready week one because of the – uh, the the surgery that he had to have on his arm, so perhaps a another off season. Well, of does he come back bigger, Ben, or just big, Ben? Because that's <laughs> oh, enough. No. I, I think that hurts him too. He he doesn't seem like he's in the best shape. You know, he's certainly not the plant man, right? No. So, uh, but uh, he's, I, he's a meat man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Meat me <laughs> only. <laughs> what was that sound drop? Hey. Where's oh the, my goodness! Where's the beef? The, the Jacoby. That was really fast. Well done. Is that Al? Has to be. Man, got the meat drops on speed dial. Got Very nice. Big bovine over here. <laughs> uh, look, uh, that's why I like uh, Deontay. Oh, yeah. more than Chase Claypool is because I believe that the short and yeah, intermediate I, routes. I are, don't argue with that. Are going to be the where he's able to continue Let, throwing the ball. Let's go to another potential addition by subtraction group of three wide receivers that all finished in the top 25, but finished at 22, 24, and 25. DJ Moore, 
Robbie Anderson and Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel is a free agent. Thank goodness. He will not be back with Carolina. I'll be yeah, shocked go, if he is. Go make a lot of money, Curtis. Curtis will be gone. Now, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson together. I hear the Lions are desperately needing wide receivers. Are we uh, for Curtis? Yes, just go somewhere. Uh, I think Washington. Uh, great. All right. DJ Moore finished at 22, consistency rank of 28. Let me check Robbie. Robbie was 24th, consistency rank of 19th. And then Curtis Samuel ended up 25th with a consistency of 28. Now, who would you rather have had between those three players? Well, the the if you're just talking about the whole season. Is it Robbie? Um, the whole season. The whole No, the whole season I would take DJ Moore. But Curtis Samuel, it if you're looking at the, the way he produced, the, those first six weeks, including I mean, he missed a week, but those first five games where he was active, nothing, honey. They were not utilizing him. It, there was all this off-season chatter of they're mixing things up. They're going to be creative about how they get Curtis Samuel the ball. Oh, and then early in the the season, uh, after two weeks, uh, CMC goes down, and oh, they're going to yeah. get Curtis Samuel ten carries a game. Yeah, and they they didn't. But <laughs> but then they then they did. Uh, Curtis Samuel was was sensational. I don't have the I can, I can wide receiver ten in total points from week seven on. So there, there you go. go. Yeah, yeah. So it, if you had if you knew who it was going to be for the second half, you would you would take Curtis Samuel. But that was an impossible. But when Absolutely. you when you combine Moore and Robbie Anderson and then the Teddy Bridgewater effect, it was impossible to start Curtis Samuel. But down the stretch, but you should have. It was very similar to to Marquise Hollywood Brown. When you start so poorly, yeah. It takes. It's always too, pretend when they're getting better. It takes too yes. long. You need you need them to prove it for too long before you're willing to go back in on a player. And you know because sometimes it's not real. Sometimes they just show up twice and then you get burned on that third game. But I I do think that this is an offense I'm interested in. I like the coaching staff. The offense is going to be better with CMC. And I'm m most excited to see what they do with quarterback because Teddy Bridgewater they hate Teddy. I'm sorry. I mean, they love the guy as a man, but yeah, they, they are trying everything they can. They've been involved with, you know, they were yeah, offering it's the up same with for, Alex Smith. They love Alex Smith, but yeah, yeah, let's find somebody other than Alex Smith. Absolutely. And and so if there are only two guys here and the potential of a quarterback improvement and Carolina has been high on all the Vegas odds of landing some of these uh, bigger names, you know, I, I wouldn't rule them out for Deshaun Watson because of that number eight pick. What if it turns out to be Derek Carr? I I don't think they would go from Teddy to Derek Carr. I've uh, the Raiders are that makes perfect sense. The the Raiders are promising. There is a or you know the the whispers. Are, it's a hot market. Mm -hmm. I think hot that's market. I think for that's Derek where Watson Carr. Watson ends up. Panthers? No. Oh, with the, with the Raiders? Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to take you know you talk about split pies in the situation. I, I'm gonna I want some humble. I'm gonna take some humble pie. Okay. Uh, now look. I didn't produce with one of my my guys, somebody that finished at ninth with a consistency of 44 and discombobulate the entire economy of fantasy football. What I did was I, I gave you mediocrity from the beginning mm. through the middle and then all the way into mm. the end consistency smooth, Very with smooth. Uh, Pooper Cup. And uh, that's <laughs> oh, 27th, at 27th in finish, 30th in consistency, despite being drafted as the wide receiver 15th. All the way to the point of his quarterback now being jettisoned from the team. And uh, it was a, an extremely disappointing year for Cooper Cup. Now, 92 receptions. That's great. That's great. Yes. He had 94 the year prior. He was the wide receiver for the year you prior. You tell me he's got 92 receptions from Jared Goff, and I tell you he's got, he's got at least 12 touchdowns. Because that means he's getting the ball around the goal line, right? How, How many? Doesn't he got 12? Three, he's got 12 minus most all of those. Three touchdowns. Three touchdowns. That was the story of his season, wasn't it? No yeah. touchdowns. Yeah, you. I mean that. That's really all it was. Was um, the inability to get the ball into the pay dirt, and that's fantasy gold. So, you know, the truth for Cooper Cup is that he was the gold's in the dirt. Gold's the, in the dirt. Well, baby. I mean, that's where you mine it, right? <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, you mine the dirt. <laughs> you mine the earth. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find gold? I think you mine, you dig, you dig for gold, <laughs> right? What Dude, am I, what am I digging? Now, in, are guys? you visualizing that you're just like, when you dig, eventually you hit a solid rock of gold? That's how I want okay. it to happen. All right. I mean, that would be nicer. I hope it's like two feet down. 
And it's just, just a, a block. a huge Truth. block. And I had to it's a brick of gold. Feet, I would Jason? like, yes, I would like it to be a perfect ingot. Just okay. complete. Uh, it's, it's good use of that word ingot. Not very, a lot of chances to do that. Very difficult <laughs> to lift. And I want to, if I throw my back out, so be it. Um, but I would like to yeah, find that fine. two feet down into my backyard. Okay. I want to bring up another player as we close things down here. I don't want him forgotten because he actually had the consistency rank of 10 overall, but again, a really rough beginning of the year. 32 was Chris Godwin. Now he was drafted as the wide receiver six, but he finished as the consistency rank of 10. We said from the whole beginning that these two guys were probably not delivering on ADP. So we were staying away, but, but a consistency of 10 on a wide receiver six drafts price draft price, 58% good games. It was just a very good second half of the year for him. It, it was it, but not expect not to expectations. Oh yeah, not to expectations. I mean, it's injuries really derailed the season for Chris Godwin. But the positive spin, like you said, very consistent. He's a good wide receiver. He's he is an excellent player. He's gonna get some money. It it, it might be from the Bucks. It might be from somewhere else. But it will be a much better season next year for Chris Godwin. Any other wide receivers you want to bring up? You've got. Uh... Uh, you got people that Julio he, finished at 53, uh, but 14th in consistency. I was going to say, guys, you don't want to forget, and we won't, but Julio still has it. Michael Thomas had a, a rough go due to injuries, and he'll be back. He'll be strong. Um, so you don't want to forget about those guys. Uh, this see all that the, Jameis talk? This isn't the last show before I draft? not. Yeah, Sean Payton, we want, we, we, we want Jameis back. Okay. We'll see. Still keep, no, keep your uh, options open. Still no update from Brees. No, he's he's got to – come on. Don't yeah. hold your team hostage. Yeah, just let him know. Yeah, it's fine either way. I'm, you know. No, it's not fine either way, either way Jason. It, you don't want him to hold the team hostage. Drew Brees coming back is holding the team hostage. Now, let, let me let me ask you this. Is um, You don't want him back, right? No, that's I, Mike's point. Well, unless you're like – maybe you're a Falcons fan. And then you, <laughs> you do. You're like, oh, yeah, Drew Brees should come back. It's funny because you it's like uh the bad breeze bird in the hand or the Winston Hill free agent in the bush. I mean, what's better for Michael Thomas? The the team is better next year with Drew Brees. I do believe that. Than than whatever their alternative is. But I don't think they're good enough to win a Super Bowl. I don't think Drew Brees can when the team happens to get down could just Bring him back. He can run a very successful, high win percentage team What's over the, the course of sixteen games. But when you've got to beat the best, Pennington, Chad Pennington, yeah, from the Jets, yeah. I think Drew Brees has to go Chad Pennington style. Well, it's it's called Big Bovine style. I mean, <laughs> big, big Ben. That's what he did. He just the offense turned into just dink and dunk. Yeah. When your arm goes, yeah, noodly. I mean, it's too bad. But for fantasy, walk away, Drew. For fantasy, we can all dream of Jameis Winston and those interceptions. Yes. Oh, they're yes, so good for can. fantasy. All right. Anybody else you guys want to bring up, or is that going to wrap up today's I'm sleepy. Let's episode. close it up. Michael Thomas, just for the record, I just say it out loud as we close the show, finished as the wide receiver 98 in total fantasy points. Whoopsies. And not close to – now, he was drafted as wide receiver one, in case you were curious. He did not return draft day value. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. The Super Bowl coming up. Join us, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers. We'll be live on Super Bowl Sunday and ultimatedraftkit.com for the pre-order. See Take you care. then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.